Hey everybody, my name is Kate Hicks and I teach flute and recorders with LessonFace.com. Today's lesson is going to be all about alternate fingerings on the flute. Oh my goodness. You know how sometimes when you have to play some notes over and over and over again, your fingers are like screaming in pain or just like, this is so hard, there must be another way to do it. Well, guess what? Your dark days are about to be over because this is the world of alternate fingerings. This is the big bad book of alternate fingerings for the flute. And I'll just show you a couple of pages and then some really fun fingerings that I use all the time. But anyway, this big bad book of alternate fingerings will show you other ways to finger all the notes in the flute. For example, let's see, what should I show you? Here's a D, just, just for a D. And look at all the different fingerings that can be used and still play a D. Now, some of those alternate fingerings will uh, play a little bit on the sharp side, and some will also play a little bit on the flat side, and this will tell you. This is especially handy, and I've used it a lot, when you are, say, trilling uh, some notes. Um, like, for example, uh, if you're going between tremolos, if you're going between an F sharp to a G sharp a bunch of times in a row, and it will show you a couple of different ways to do it. And, you know, the beauty of this is you can figure it out. Um, nobody's going to know. Give yourself permission to do alternate fingerings. All that matters at the very end of the day is that your music is coming out. Nobody's going to know. All right, guys? So anyway, get this book. It is called, again, Alternate Fingerings for the Flute by Nestor Herzbaum. <laughs> okay. You'll find it really handy. And I just love it. It goes up to the way high notes also, if you can see this, from the A sharp to a B natural. And if you have to do that a bunch of times, this shows you various ways to do it. This is all about making your life as a musician easier. All right, now I'm gonna show you some of my favorites that I do all the time. And I've written them up here. So let's see, first of all, a really common one, F sharp. Okay, we all know F sharp as this. This is actually called the F sharp key. But there's another way to do it, and I've written it here. So what you do is you're, you are pressing down the second key on the right hand, all right? So instead of this, you're doing the middle finger on, on the key. So this is really handy, for example, if you have to go from E natural to an F sharp, it's really annoying. Those fingers want to cramp up and all that. So an easier way to do it is like this. Watch, here's, here's icky way, E natural to F sharp. Especially if you have to do it over and over again, it's a hassle. But here's an E natural to the alternate F sharp. All you're doing is lifting up this, this uh, index finger. It's way easier. So, you know, when you're playing some passages and even if it's slow and you want a really smooth E natural to an F sharp, think to yourself, ooh, I wonder if I use the alternate F sharp way, if that is going to make it easier. So that's a really, really good one, and I use that one all the time. All right, here's another one. Okay, C sharp. Now, when you look in the, uh, when you look at the fingering charts for C sharp, they pretty much will always say, oh, it's just pinky only. But know this, any finger on your right hand can play a C, it, you're still playing a C sharp, watch. Anything goes on in the right hand. It's the exact same thing. As long as all your fingers on the left hand are off, your flute is going to be playing a C sharp. So, for example, just know the fewer fingers that have to move is pretty much always the way to go. So if I were playing a D to a C sharp, and I have to go D and I use the fingering chart to C sharp, oh boy, that's a lot of fingers that have to move. We don't really wanna do that. But knowing about the flute, if you just release everything in your left hand, boom, there is the C sharp right there. Because anything could be down on the right hand, watch. Here's D icky way to the C sharp. It's a 
a lot of fingers moving, but if you do it the other way, it's a lot smoother. All right, that's another one. Now, the pinky. In the fingering chart, just about every single note has the pinky down. Primarily, it's for balance. Most of the time, it doesn't make a difference. Like, for example, I'll do a G with the pinky down, but here's without the pinky. There's really no difference, and it is that way in most of the notes. If you're not sure, then just play a note, like, for example, E's. do hear a little bit of a difference with the ease for whatever reason so anyway if I were um, playing a passage and I have to go for example D to E natural all the time okay that's kind of icky isn't it it's like ew 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 but if you leave the pinky up let's see that worked really well and that happens to be the, the actual trill and I've noticed um, when I'm playing like an orchestra or whatever, and I'm playing some fast music, and, and I have to... Sometimes I'll just, I'll just relax my right hand and just leave the pinky up the whole time. I can get away with it. Again, nobody out there in the audience, they're not going to notice. What matters is that you are able to play the music beautifully, and it comes across that way they're not going to know. Now, one of my favorites, last but not least, is to use harmonics for alternate fingerings. And this goes with a little story. This is when I first learned to do it. I was playing in an orchestra years ago, and we had to play um, high E natural F sharp to G a bunch of times in a row. And that's a pain. It's like, ew, 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 ew. Try that. E natural, high E natural, F sharp, and then high G. And it's just, oh my gosh, it's almost impossible. So I was sitting next to, next to a lady and she was just playing it beautifully. And after we finished, I asked her, so how in the world did you do that? And she looked at me and kind of laughed. She said, watch this. So what she did was just starting on an A and played the harmonic above it which is really close to the uh, high E natural. It's not exact, but it's pretty darn close. So what she did was just play, and I wrote it down here, from A, B, C, do the harmonic on the A, B, C, and you'll end up with uh, the high E natural, F, and G. Watch. Here's the A, harmonic, and keeping the harmonic going, Oh my gosh, see how I just did that? I just did A, B natural to the C, but I did the harmonic above that. And I was able to plunk out high E natural, F sharp, and G a bunch of times. Again, nobody out there is going to notice. Give yourself permission to figure out other ways to finger a passage. If it just seems near impossible to do or really annoying, figure it out. Get that big blue book of alternate fingerings. This is super, super helpful. If you don't have that, just think to yourself, hmm, I wonder if I leave this finger down, is that going to help? Is it going to make a difference? And you know what? Now your dark days are over. Alternate fingerings to the rescue and enjoy. It's going to be a lot easier to play stuff. All right. Love you and leave you. Again, find me on LessonFace.com. If you have a particular lesson you want me to post, put a comment down below and I will certainly put it up. And I hope you're all having a wonderful day and see you next time. Bye.